Hey, good morning, good evening, and good night, wherever you're watching from. I am Mika, and I'm here again with a, um, another Bible story time, okay? Um, today, we're in um, 1 Kings chapter 19. Last week, we were in 1 Kings chapter 18, and we were talking about the contest on Mount Carmel, Carmel, Car we were talking about how uh, Elijah came and did his thing and showed who was the one true and only living God, the almighty God, um, by God sending down fire from heaven to um, burn up the uh, sacrifice. And um, yeah, this. <sighs> and the lesson we got in that is, you know, in the beginning, God said that it would be rain. And here we are in the end, Elijah praying and, rain, and, and the rain came. And we also talked about how um, stand, being in God's will and walking in his ways and knowing him and communing with him and being with him, we won't have to question no moves that we make because God is in us and we are with him and he's with us and he will lead God and direct our path so that everything we think, do, and say will line up with his will. So um, if you have not watched the video, go back and check it out. And I pray that, you know, Holy Spirit speak, speaks to you through that video. This week, we are in 1 Kings chapter 19, and the title of this is Elijah Flees to Sinai. And um, yeah, let's get into the word. Before we do, we're going to pray. God, I thank you just for another great, glorious, beautiful day here today. Um, and I just thank you um, that you are great and mighty. And I also thank you that you are the one true and living God, and that I have the pleasure and honor and just privilege of serving you. And the floor is yours. Have your way. Do it on you can. I decrease and you increase. Amen. First Kings chapter 19. Elijah flees to Sinai. Verse 1. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel. Okay, now. Let me back to go back to uh, First Kings uh, 18. And we hear, um, see, Elijah, when he pretty much showed up and showed out, um, he killed all the... Um, the prophets, the fake prophets of Baal or whatever. He killed all the fake prophets. And Ahab, you know, he went back after all this happened. He like, I'm going to give you a head start. Go on, you know, go on to the house or whatever. And Ahab did just that. And when he got, here we are now to when um, Ahab gets back to uh, Sinai. No, he, when he gets back to the palace with his wife Jezebel. Here we are in chapter 19. This is where it starts off at. Chapter 19. When Ahab got home, he told Jezebel everything Elijah had done, including the way he had killed all the prophets of Baal. Baby! <sighs> Elijah killed all the fake prophets. I meant the prophets. Telling his wife, big grown man. So Jezebel sent this message to Elijah. This in verse 2. May the gods, lowercase g, strike me and even kill me. If by this time tomorrow I have, I would not have killed you just mm. as you disregard that. That's my uh, message. <laughs> they just let me know this urgent. Listen up, y'all. <laughs> the God strike me and even verse two. May this time tomorrow the gods, Lord KG, strike me and even kill me. If by this time tomorrow I have not killed you just as you have killed them. Elijah was afraid and fled for his life. He went to Beersheba, a town in Judah, and he left his servant there. Then he went on alone into the wilderness, traveling all day. He sat down under a solitary broom tree and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life, for I am no better than my ancestors who have already died. I think following God... Following, you know, obeying God and being his servant will not come without his challenges, will not come without us being like, man, this is trash. This is ghetto. I'm tired of this. And this is where Elijah was. But what did he do two chapters ago when he was presented with adversity? He went to God and he went, he took it to God. And what God do? Showed up and showed out on his behalf. And here we are again. Elijah has a pattern. If he has an issue, or he have a problem, he's going to take it to God and no one else. So that's a lesson that we need to take from Elijah to know that when we have issues and problems, to go to God about it. Don't go 
telling nobody else, talking to nobody else, because no one else is able to help you and comfort you the way our Heavenly Father is. So verse 5, then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread, some bread baked on hot stones and a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, get up and get, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank and the, and the food gave him, gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of God. There he had, he came to a cave where he spent the night. So maybe Elijah was just hangry a little bit. Maybe he was just a little hangry. Maybe he was just hungry. How many times we talk and be saying stuff because we tired and we hungry. We sleeping and we hungry. And Elijah right here, he's sleeping and he hungry. So he went and took a nap and God fed him, comforted him the way a father does. He sent provision for him. He sent comfort to him. He, he comforted him in this moment, gave him what he needed because the Bible says the Lord shall supply all of our needs. And in this time, Elijah thought he was just tired or thought maybe he just needed a nap. Nah, but you need to repl replenish yourself because of what you just did. And I don't think that this was just a physical feeding. I think spiritually, Elijah needed to be replenished as well. So I just think this food was a representation of God reviving him and replenishing him for the journey ahead. Filling him up for what he had just done and refilling him for what he's about to take on moving forward. So here we are. Um, verse um, nine, there he came to a cave where he spent the night. But the Lord said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replied, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. Elijah like that, listen. I done did. I done faithfully served you. And these folks still ain't listening. They still hard head. I'm tired on. I'm ready to get. Listen, I'm tired. I'm tired, boss. <laughs> Verse 11. Go out and stand before me on the mountain, the Lord told him. And as Elijah stood there, the Lord passed by and a mighty wind hit the mountain. It was such a terrible blast that the rocks were torn loose. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there was the sound of a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Isn't that amazing that all these wondrous things that you would think our almighty God would show up in? A fire? Hello, the burning bush with Moses. A wind breaking rocks in the mountain. Like, I mean, it's going down in front of Elijah. He like, all these loud things you think God would show up in, but he showed up in a gentle whisper. Why? Because that is exactly what Elijah needed in that moment. Yeah, the wind and the word, that would you know, that's cute. But in that moment, Elijah needed a gentle whisper, like a comforting voice and sound. That's why we may think that all that God may show up in this way or that way, this whole miraculous way, but then he's going to show up in a way that we don't even expect, in a way that we don't want even, we're not even looking for. But Elijah knew God and reverenced him enough to when he heard this gentle whisper, he covered his face. I'm not even worthy. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm not even worthy. I'm not even, even though it's a whisper, I'm not even worthy. Just in case you are passing, but I'm not even worthy to even see your face. That's true reverence and honor for God. My God. Woo. And a voice said, what are you doing here, Elijah? Verse 14. He replied again, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. So Elijah didn't change his tune. He pretty much was like, I, listen, I did what you told me to do. <laughs> Been faithful in it. I'm tired of these people still. I, you asked me at first, I'm, I'm still tired of them. Even now, I'm still tired of them. That's it. That's, what's, that's what I'm doing here. I'm tired of these folks. And I think it, 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 that's a testament to us to be honest with God. 
even if we are doing his work, even if we are serving him, the, hey, if something, we're not complaining. We're being real honest by saying, Lord, we, this is a lot. I'm tired. This too much. And did he rebuke Elijah? Let's see. Verse 15. Then the Lord told him, go back the same way you came and travel to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive there, anoint Hazael to be king of Aram. Then anoint Jehu, grandson of Nimshi, to be king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat, from the town of Abit, to replace you as my prophet. Anyone who escapes from Hazael will be killed by Jehu, and those who escape Jehu will be killed by Elisha. Yet I will preserve 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed them. So, okay. In this here, we see God giving Elijah an answer to what he's um, what he's requesting. Because here he is. I have zealous, zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. Elijah, God gave him an answer. Jehu, so we, so he let him know. Jehu, you finna anoint him to be to take over uh, Ahab. He finna overrule him. So you ain't gotta worry about that. Anoint Elisha to replace you. So, along with that, he didn't say like to, he's to be his successor. Let me say that. Um, Elijah, Elijah said he was alone. So him anointing Elisha to pretty much show him the ropes. Now he's not alone anymore. He has companionship. He has somebody to be with. He's not alone. And God also comforted him by telling me it's 7,000 more people who haven't bowed, who haven't kissed. So your work was not in vain. What you've been doing has not been in vain. Even if you don't see, if it's just one person. 7,000 people Elijah hasn't bowed to Baal. They haven't worshipped or kissed him either. So your work is not in vain. It's not fruitless. You may not see it. It may not be in the way that you want it to happen. It may People may not be delivered in the masses that you would like to see. Yeah, they see all these mighty sounds and wonders and all that, but 7,000 have not bowed. So here you are. You know even, you saying you want to die. You saying that you're tired. So here we are. We have someone as your successor who, who you won't be alone. You won't be alone. So here you're not alone. And I'm telling you know. Jehu is going to take over Ahab. So that lets you know that he's going to be taken care of. I have already defeated your enemies in these one, in these verses right here. What Elijah was asking God for, he answered his prayer. He answered what it is he was concerned about. That's a good father, y'all. That is a great, great, great father. And he did not rebuke Elijah for him saying, I'm tired. I done served you. These folks still ain't listening. I, he didn't do that. He said, all right. I'm a good father, so here I am. I'm not, no, I'm not finna, no, you're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. I'm gonna send you a companion. Somebody who you can, so you won't be alone. Even though I know I'm with you, even though you know I'm with you. Here on earth, we need, we need other people, community. So I'm, I'm gonna send Elijah, Elisha, and I've taken care of your enemies. And your fruit, your, your work was not in vain, because 7,000 more people who haven't bowed down to Baal. It's not in vain, Elijah. Be encouraged. My God. Verse 19. So Elijah went and found Elisha, son of Shaphat, plowing a field. There were 12 teams of oxen in the field, and Elisha was plowing with the 12 team. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak across his shoulders and then walked away. Elisha left the oxen standing there and ran after Elijah and said to him, First, let me go and kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will go with you. Elijah replied, Go back, but think about what I have done to you. So Elisha returned to his oxen and slaughtered them. He used the wood for the plow to build a fire and roast their flesh. He passed around the meat to the townspeople and they all ate. Then he went with Elijah as his assistant. I think Elijah like, listen, you can go kiss your folks. You can go do that. But don't don't start second guessing. Because who say that them folks ain't going to have nothing to say about what you about to go do? And you leave and you kill. Who? Uh-uh. Think about it. Go think about it. So Elijah was like, mm. Yeah, you're right. So he went on just dead at everything. Like, I ain't even finna have to come back for nothing. It's nothing I'm gonna have to come back here to. So let me whoop the whoop with the uh with the oxen, kill these things, feed everybody, 
I have nothing left here. I have nothing left here that I need to be thinking about with this assignment. He had discernment enough to know, like, oh, this is serious. Bro, just threw his coat on me and just walked away. Oh, this is serious. Let me, I'm, I'm, I need to answer this call. That's good. That's good, Elisha. Thank you for being obedient. Because I would have had a lot of questions. Wait a minute, bro. What's up? I know you. Let's be clear. That's me. That's me. That's me. But Elijah was like, and he killed his way of living. How he made money, he went and just kicked. So he had nothing left to come back and look. That's faith. That's crazy faith, may I add. That's crazy faith. But that right there was the end of that chapter. And um, I just think that God is calling us to still when we're, Elijah was discouraged in this. He was discouraged. And with him being discouraged, he didn't go and talk to other people. He came and talked to God. And also, God gave, when Elijah, thank you, Holy Spirit. When Elijah was discouraged, sad, hello, depressed, let's talk about it, ready to die, ready to give it all, just be like, whatever, God came and comforted him. But even in that, God gave Elijah instructions on what to do. Did he not? He did. And what did Elijah do? Was he disobedient because he was depressed? Did he say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that because he was tired of these people? Did he just say, start walking in rebellion and being stubborn because of how he was feeling? No, did we read that? Because God clearly he asked him. He didn't, when God asked him a question, he went like, getting having an attitude. No, he said how he feel. What he felt, how he felt, he was honest with God about that. And God gave him instructions and comforted him and let him know what needed to be done. But he didn't be disobedient and be stubborn and, and walk in rebellion because of things not going his way. He followed the instructions that God had given him. May we always be honest with God, letting him know where we are. What, what, what God asked him? What are you doing here? What are you doing here? I, no, I had to ask myself that. Amika, what are you doing here? God, I'm, I'm frustrated about a few things. Yeah. I, I thought stuff been lined up where it's supposed to be, but it's not. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling some type of way. That's the truth. I'm feeling some type of way. And what God do, being a great father that he is, he give me, Lord, I need you to comfort me. Oh, y'all think I'm talking about something that hasn't happened? No, I'm talking about prior to me even recording this video, I had this conversation with my heavenly father. Yes. Yes. And so for this to be the word of the day, I tell y'all, and I told y'all this weeks ahead, I'm encouraged. Every single week, I'm encouraged. Why? Because I honestly believe that I, God does not have me in First Kings for nothing. This to encourage, listen to y'all, and for me, for Him to encourage me, because I need encouragement. I need to know to stay the path and bring my frustrations to God, and don't walk in disobedience or rebellion because I'm frustrated, because I'm feeling some type of way, because of my sinful nature, me being human. I look to nothing and nobody else when it comes to my frustrations. And may you all do the same thing. Don't look to nothing and nobody else. I don't look to my husband to comfort me. No no food, no none of that. I go to God. I go to God. And the comfort that I need, I have been given it. That's why I'm sitting right here right now to be a testament to y'all to know that when you are frustrated, don't walk in disobedience. Don't be disobedient. Don't be stubborn when he tell you to do something because... Even if you don't see a result from things that you've been praying about, just know, just like here, God told Elijah, 7,000 people are following me. 7,000 people haven't bowed. 7,000 people are still on the right path. 7,000, you're not alone. You're not alone. And I'm encouraging my, Mika, you're not alone. I'm not alone. What I'm doing is not in vain. The sacrifices that I have made, made are not in vain. They're not. God is going to give me an answer. God is going to comfort me in the meantime. He's going to give me something to eat. He's going to give me something to drink. I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to rest. 
I'm not talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself. Right now. Mika, what are you doing here? I'm resting. I'm waiting. I'm staying obedient. That's what I'm doing. What are you doing here? Until you give me instructions. Until you tell me what to do. I'm doing that here. What? That's what I'm doing here. Be encouraged, y'all. Be encouraged to know that God loves you. He cares. He cares. I don't care about what it is. He cares about it. Be encouraged. I love every single one of y'all. Any and everybody that's ever watched three seconds of this. I love you. God loves you. And he just wants us to be on the right path and stay on the path of righteousness. And hit, stay on his path and his will for our lives because he loves us. Well, put your name. He loves Mika. He loves whatever your name and he loves you. So be encouraged. I love you. That was that was First Kings chapter 19. We're talking about Elijah. So um, next we will be in First Kings chapter 20. Listen, that's what I'm saying, but I don't know. But more than likely we will. I don't know though. Don't quote me on that, okay? But until then, I love you and I pray that you get something from this message and just ask Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? What are you, what are you telling me? What are you trying to say to me during this message? And he'll let you know. But until then, be encouraged. I love you. And have a great rest of your day. In Jesus' name. Amen.